Hello everyone, and welcome to your third Swift programming tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how we can work with if statements in Swift. Now before I begin that, I'm just going to make a brief comment on how you can make comments in Swift. So a comment is simply, be, is simply created by creating a double slash, so just hit your slash key twice, and now you can type some comment. And what a comment is, is just simply something that you might want to tell yourself as you're writing code. Maybe, you know, come back to the spot, implement this later, or trying to explain what this code does or something like that. Then that's the use of a comment. It's something that the compiler or your program actually doesn't care about. It's only useful for people that actually are reading your code. So that's how you can create a comment. Another very useful case is if you are typing some code and perhaps you know you're testing some different values out and so you have a you know and you're just testing different values for a number that you're reusing later and perhaps you know you don't want to just keep retyping let num equal 5 and then let num equal 10 and keep switching back and forth and changing the values you can just, you can quickly change the values by just commenting out the old value that you might have had so if you want to you know test some different values you can just quickly comment out something and then you can comment out or comment in something that you had before. So this is a very another very useful case is if you want to quickly test different pieces of code, you can comment out the line of code. And again, this is just the command slash key that allows you to do this. So that's a comment, just a double slash in the beginning, and you've created a comment. Another useful way of creating a comment is the slash star. And all this is doing is allows you for a multi-line comment and it can run on many lines and then we can stop with this so we can just say star slash and then that is the end of the comment so now we can start typing code like we normally do okay so this is the multi-line comment it just allows you to start it with a slash star and then you end it with a star slash to indicate the end of the comment. All right, so you can play around a little bit with that and uh, not too much there, but uh, that those are comments. Let's talk about if statements. So what is an if statement? Well, you've probably, you know, there's plenty of examples in everyday life where you are have a question and you need some condition, and then maybe if that condition is true, you can do something like, if you vacuum your room, you can go to the movies, or if you have money, you can buy a coffee, or, you know, an example maybe in a programming sense is, you know, you might go into some websites and they, you know, let's say you're looking at some cool new video game, they ask you to enter your age, and you lie saying you're from 1970, but, you know, whatever, it gets you in, it says that you're older than 18. But the point is, they have a check on their computers, basically, to check to see that you're older than 18. So, simply somewhere in their code, they'll have a condition saying, if this kid is older than 18, then let him onto the site, basically, right? So, how we can simulate this in Swift, or how we do this in programming, is with an if statement. It just says, if this thing is true, then execute the following code. So, let's go back to our something we talked about in the very first tutorial, which is a bool. And we didn't talk about this very long, but let's say I have an example where I like chocolate. Chocolate is true. So of course, like I said, everyone likes chocolate. So if we like chocolate, then we'll do something. So we're going to print out a little message saying, um, I love chocolate. Like that. So what this is saying is if this condition after the if statement is true, so whatever is from the after the if to before the um, curly brace, if this thing is true, then execute this code. Now we can see this if we go over to view assistant editor and show assistant editor, because you'll notice the actual output isn't displayed in the normal output category of the, uh, the playground. So as you can see though, we have this little section called console output and we can see that it says, I love chocolate. Now what this print line is doing right here, or print line, however you want to pronounce it, 
It's just a function, and it takes in a string. So it takes a string, and then it prints out something. Again, I haven't actually explained how to make your own functions yet, but again, don't worry about it. This is just a print statement, and you're just putting in some string of text saying, I love chocolate, for example, and then the print lin just prints it out. Like that. All right, now, what if I don't like chocolate? Well, we can use an else to indicate this. So else we don't like chocolate, well, we could just say, print lin, I hate chocolate. Like that. And the else is the opposite, basically, of the if. So basically, if this if statement is false, so if this condition is false, in other words, if we do not like chocolate, then we'll fall down into the else. The else is saying, whatever else you got, I'm going to cover it. So. In this case, we have if like chocolate is true. In this case, we did say that like chocolate is true, and so our output is I love chocolate. In the case, though, that we actually don't love chocolate, so I can say false, and we can see now that the console output is I hate chocolate, because the if statement goes through. It says if we like chocolate, this is actually false, so the if statement fails. If the if statement fails, we go on to the next part and we hit the else. And the else says, okay, because the if statement failed, we'll execute whatever I have. And so we do whatever's in the else block, which is I hate chocolate. Now you can get more complicated with this though. You don't have to just have simple, uh, you know, bool, false, and uh, true. You can be a little more expressive with if statements as well. So what if I'm, you know, trying to buy something in a store, let's just say I'm I'm buying a coffee, for example, so I'll call this price, and you know the price that I'll pay for a coffee, or price that I am thinking right now is uh, five dollars. Okay, so just you, we're just going to make a little constant there called price. So the price just represents the price of the coffee. Now, there's different conditions. If you know, let's just say, for example, if the coffee is less than four dollars then that's a steal to us. We we like to, you know, go to Starbucks apparently where coffees cost a lot. And so if the coffee's under four dollars, then that's a steal. If it's between four and six, we'll be happy with that. You know, we'll buy it. If it's anything above six dollars, then we won't go for it. So let's try to set that up. If the price is less than four dollars, then we will just simply say, um, awesome. You know, this is a great deal. Four dollar coffee. Now, uh, what if in another case we have, we want to know if the price is between four dollars and six dollars. So we can represent this by saying, well, if the price, and you'll notice just to clarify that we said else if, so what this is saying is, if the first thing fails, then we'll fall down into the next part. The else if indicates that we have another condition. So if we just have the else like we had in the previous statement like this, there's no condition. You'll notice we just said else and then something will happen. If we say else if, we're setting it up for another condition. We can now say, okay, well, the first thing failed, let's try this thing. So now if the price is greater than or equal to $4, and, so to represent uh, multiple conditions in the same if, we can say something like this, which is double ampersand. And the double ampersand, in case you don't know where the ampersand key is, is uh, 7 on your keyboard, so you just hit shift 7. We can say if the price is greater than $4, or greater than or equal to $4, and the price is less than or equal to $6, for example, then we'll actually buy the coffee. So we'll say... Uh, print and okay we'll buy it now if it's anything else so basically if it's more than six dollars right because we've covered all the other conditions we've covered if the price is less than four dollars if the price is between four and six dollars or if it's anything else AK it has to be higher than six dollars then we'll just say that's crazy and we won't buy it. Okay, so now that we have this if statement, we have the if condition set up, we can check to see different prices. So 
If the price of the coffee was only $3, you can see that we get the output of awesome, right? Uh, right over there in our console output, because again, the price was less than $4. As soon as we go up to $4 though, we'll see that we actually aren't in the awesome zone in, anymore, we're in the else if zone. And because you'll notice that this condition says the price is strictly less than $4 by just saying this uh, caret key or the uh, angle bracket less than, we're saying the price is strictly less than $4. So if the price is $4, it means it's actually greater. It's equal to $4, but that's not what we're checking for. We're checking to make sure that it's less than $4 in this case. But the else if you'll see is checking to see that it's greater than or equal to $4. So because we have a price of $4, this is where our price falls in range. So the price is actually equal to $4, which is valid for our condition here. So the price is greater than or equal to $4 and the price is less than $6, so we're good. If we test for $5, okay, we'll still buy it. If we test for $6, we're still in that zone, okay, we'll buy it. As soon as we add one penny more though, we're now out of the zone, right? We've crossed that threshold and we're saying, all right, that's crazy, we're not gonna buy any coffee because we are now beyond $6, right? So that is how we can work with if else statements in Swift. Another thing that you'll want to know about this, we've covered pretty much all the operators. There's the less than, there's also greater than, so that is represented with, you might guess, the opposite uh, direction with the angle brackets. So that indicates the price is greater than $4. And we can see that awesome will actually be printed out in this case. Now, keeping with that though, we have then the greater than or equal to, that is again fairly obvious of what that is. There's also different things such as if the price is exactly equal to, so we can say if the price is equal to $4, then we'll, this condition is true. And the last case is if the price is not equal to this value. So you can see that if the price is not equal to $4, then this statement is now true. And now we can print out awesome, like the console shows us over there. So those are all the different operations that you'll see. There's six different ones. There's the less than, the greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, equal to, and not equal to. So those are all the different options that you will find as you uh, play around with if statements. Now, another thing that I'll take note on just briefly before I end this tutorial is on this double ampersand. The double ampersand is saying that both of these conditions have to be true. So as long as, and we can actually kind of experiment with this, so we can say if uh, true, true, and true, which is what uh, this condition is if we have a value of say $5. So if this is the case, right, price is greater than or equal to four, price is less than or equal to four, we're basically saying that the first condition was true and the second condition is also true. Now, what if one of these is false, right? If one of these is false, as soon as one of these is false, then this is actually going to fail because we've said to ourselves that we needed both of these to be true in order for the entire statement to be true. If you wanted to check to see if either of the conditions were true, so, so in this case, if either the price is greater than or $4 or if, or if the price is greater than, or sorry, rather, if the price is less than $4, then we could execute this. This isn't, I mean, you really wouldn't do a check like that because it doesn't make sense. You'd be covering everything if that was the case. But let's just say, for example, if we wanted to check if either one of these is true, we would use the double bar, basically. And this indicates an or. So the last thing was an and, but this guy is an or. So that character, just by the way, is located above the return key. It's the shift on the backslash character. So that is the bar. Now what this indicates is that if either of these condi conditions are true, then the whole thing will be true. So as long as one of these guys is true, then we're good. If both of them are true, then we're also good. The only time that one of these is false, or the entire output I should say is false, is if both of the conditions are false. So if both of them are false, we'll see that the actual total output is false. So if we had a condition like that in the if statement where the first thing was false or, and then the next thing was false, you'd have 
false. Anyway, I hope that is good enough for you guys to explain how if statements work. If you have any questions at all on how I went about the logic of my trues and falses, then feel free to ask that in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in an upcoming tutorial. See you then.